Ah, remember all those dreams when you first started your business, imagining yourself driving Ferraris on top of your Lamborghinis while going to your giant house that you've just bought all cash when you're returning from a trip where you just spoke to thousands of entrepreneurs about all the freedom your business gave you. And now as a successful entrepreneur, you realize it's all a big lie. Hey, what's up guys? Greg here at EF, and I have the absolute honor of talking to entrepreneurs all the time. And I've often said that one of the reasons that makes marketing so fascinating to me at Empire Flippers is I'm very similar to our customers, I'm especially on the seller side. Like I'm very like relatively entrepreneurial in the way I think, my mindset, all this kind of stuff. There's something I've noticed that is very intriguing, very interesting that not a lot of people talk about. And that is this concept of freedom, of entrepreneurial freedom. You see, when you start your business, you think like, okay, I'm gonna start my business, quit my job, be my own boss, be the master of my own fate, right? I'm going to have all this extra freedom. But then there is these flaws that start appearing in the entrepreneurial dream as you become more and more successful. You are creating this hamster wheel that isn't as free as you initially thought, right? Like, yes, you may, maybe you did fire your boss and go full time as an entrepreneur, but guess what? You traded in that human boss for a much crueler boss one that is algorithmic based instead of <laughs> meat based, right? And they are much, much harder to negotiate and often a crueler master. Google doesn't update or Amazon changes their policies. Hey, that's the name of the game now. Deal with it, <laughs> whether it hurts you or not. Maybe it benefited you, hopefully it did. But at the end of the day, you are controlled by these robots, by these machines, right? And the flaws of entrepreneurship become ever more clear. And this is especially true in say e-commerce where you're scaling up, say you're an Amazon FBA business, right? you're scaling it up from scratch, you're making incredible revenue while being broke as hell with the net profit because all that profit has to be spent back in to order more inventory, which that inventory then requires more marketing and that more marketing brings more customers who now creates more demand for, you guessed it, more inventory. And it creates this whole kind of vicious hamster wheel. We have a buyer, he was a bit famous for saying, I love all these Amazon FBA entrepreneurs. They're all young, rich, and incredibly broke. <laughs> Right? So this is something that happens that not a lot of people talk about with entrepreneurship and really only successful entrepreneurs would ever really know it because it is the success of what you have built that builds the hamster wheel in the first place. Without your success, this would never have happened. You'd probably still be thinking like, I could definitely get a Ferrari like that guy on YouTube told me I could. Not me, another guy. It was probably playing an ad on this video actually. Don't buy his course. <laughs> but with that said, how can we make entrepreneurship give the freedom that was advertised? How do we get that last step. Well, before we get to that last step, we got to understand the double edged sword of growth. So growth is a great thing. And as entrepreneurs, we're always wanting more, right? How do I grow more? How do I do more? How do I be more? And we're often visionaries in this stuff. And we push ourselves very, very hard to sometimes the point we might even demotivate our team with how big the goals are, right? Of what we want to do, what we want to attempt. But here's the thing, growth can be just as risky as not making money. Now, obviously not making money is going to be probably worse than growth. But hear me out. The reason why growth is risky is because when you grow, when you scale, especially if you're scaling very fast, it's very easy to where you to scale inefficiencies, scale processes that worked when you're at say 5k a month that now at 50k a month are hurting the business. And because it's scaled that inefficiency, that that worseness has now also scaled with the business. And what was a tiny little leak is now a gaping hole in the business that can be very difficult to solve if you have 5, 10, 15 other gaping holes in your business that were also once leaks when you were a smaller business before you scaled. So growth can be this double-edged sword. I'm not saying you shouldn't go after growth as an entrepreneur. Obviously, that's the name of the game. You're growing or you're dying, right? And that's, again, part of this hamster wheel I'm talking about with entrepreneurship and the freedom, it, it's, you know, usually people advertise with being your own boss. So what can we do here it is another thing, another mindset shift when we think about growth is also also realize how valuations work. So the interesting thing with how valuations work, with how business valuations work, it is often a sentiment of risk that goes into the valuation. The less risky your business is, the more valuable it tends to be. Now, 
when it comes to software, say software as a service, that that acumen is a little bit different. The algorithm there is a little bit different where they are valued based on growth potential and the velocity of that growth. But with most other businesses is, is a pure SDE kind of thing. Seller discretionary earnings, the total net profits of the companies, all the cash flows, all that kind of stuff is what actually goes into the valuation. And then most of the valuation is looking at things that are less risky. Right. So if you have traffic diversity, that can increase your valuation. What does traffic diversity really mean? You get traffic coming in from multiple different channels. It's less risky. The business won't go bust overnight because uh, Facebook banned your ad account. Right. It's less risky. Multiple revenue channels. Again, your business doesn't go bust if one product falls out of favor because you have five other products that people tend to love that de risks the business. Right. With multiple revenue streams. So valuations like a premium valuation is often a reflection of how how much less risk there is with a business. Now, obviously not all the time, but that is the kind of the basic calculus of what a buyer is looking at. And the reason why I bring this up is one, to change your mindset about growth a little bit, because I do feel like sometimes entrepreneurs have this like insane obsession with growth, which I totally get, but it can lead you to some bad neighborhoods, so to speak, <laughs> down the road if you're not careful. But the other reason why I bring this up about risk and valuation is because there is actually a way for you to achieve that freedom that entrepreneurship promised, like real time freedom, real financial freedom, all the freedoms you could ever imagine is actually possible through entrepreneurship, more possible through entrepreneurship actually than anything else you could do. Entrepreneurship gives you the ability to do this that literally I couldn't do it because I, I'm an employee, right? I, I could not do what I'm about to tell you to do. And that is very simple. And it's going to sound extremely promotional, it kind of is, but the thing you can do is sell your business. So hear me out. Why selling your business can give you the entrepreneurial freedom that you most likely craved when you first started the business, when it was first a side hustle, before it became this overwhelming empire you built that now has you under its thumb versus the other way around, right? So let's talk about why selling your business is actually the way you get the freedom and hey, maybe even the Ferrari. So there's two big things that happens when you sell your business that lends itself to creating this freedom in your fight against the machines. The first off is you're absolutely divorced from the algorithms, right? The Facebooks of the world, the Amazons of the world, Jeff Bezos can no longer touch your bank account, right? This is fantastic because you have taken all this equity you have built and you've cashed out the chips. You've converted that equity, converted that, that value you built in the marketplace into cold, hard cash, right? So now if they make a change, if Amazon makes a change to their warehouse, Google makes a change to their algorithm, whatever, it no longer matters. It is not your concern. You are gone from that, right? You have cashed out. You've sold the business, which leads to the second really big thing that gives you this freedom that I'm talking about. And that freedom comes from a life changing exit. Now, I've often talked about on this channel, the perfect time to sell your business is when it gets you closer to a personal or business goal. That is what you really should be doing. And likewise, I'm going to tell you to do the same here. If your business is too small to get you significantly closer to a personal and business goal, I would actually recommend you holding on to it, going a few more cycles with that hamster wheel of viciousness because you want to grow the business to a point where it is a significant leap towards your personal and business goals. It doesn't have to get you there right away, right? But it should be a significant leap towards whatever you're trying to achieve and do. And it's often easier to take a business from, you know, $5,000 a month to $10,000 a month than it is to go from zero to $1,000 a month. So if you're like, you know, having a business around two, three thousand dollars a month, maybe hold on to that a bit longer, depending on what your personal and business goals are, because those next jumps of income are often easier to get than the first jumps. So that's why I would recommend there. But with that said, this life changing capital, when you do sell, can do amazing things for you that just simply were not possible before. And this is what I call the doors of possibilities. So once you sell your business, you're divorced from the algorithm, you have your life changing capital. There's a bunch of stuff you can do with the capital. You can invest in real estate for like, you know, long term rentals, right? Or Airbnbs, whatever you like. You can do stocks, right? You go in day trader. Wouldn't recommend that, but some people love doing it. And of course, our favorite crypto. You can buy however many Dogecoins you want. Though again, probably wouldn't recommend that if you want to stop working and be financially free. <laughs> but there are some cryptos that will probably get you there, but I don't know about Doge. 
The point is you now have more money than you've probably ever had at one time in your life just handed to you. You've had 38 months by that multiple, 38 months of your life just given to you. Here you go, go go and have fun, right? So you can go and do things and make plays that were not available to you. And now when I say these doors of possibilities, th these three things that, you know, stocks, real estate and crypto are not the only avenue for you of what you can do with that capital. In fact, a lot of the buyers on our marketplace say they sell a million dollar business, they'll come back to our marketplace and buy a couple 200 or $300,000 businesses. And they're still divorcing a lot of their equity outside of the algorithm. And now they're just playing. They're just playing growth because they grew their business to a certain size so they can go buy a business that's smaller because they probably know the pains that that business is going through that that entrepreneur probably doesn't know how to fix this because they're still on that journey, right? So they can go and buy that business and build it up and then sell it again. We often see this happen. In fact, I have a whole video dedicated to this process called the asset flywheel that I'll link down below that can create some pretty impressive wealth in a pretty uh, impressively short time. But the key is, is the doors of possibilities. It isn't about what you're going to do, but what you have the availability to do. You now have the option to do that you never had. And this is what gets you off of the hamster wheel. When you go and sell your business, you're giving the hamster wheel to someone else. Here, take care of this. I'm going to go sit on a bench in a park for a while and read a book, right? You have the time freedom now to do whatever you want. You can go back into business. You can uh, go hardcore in investing because let, let's say you did build up to a million dollar, $2 million business. For most people, that is pretty close. If not, they're retirement number or what they're trying to reach, right? You, congratulations, you just got there, right? You, you were able to build that up. So when you go to sell your business, that is when you can be free. That is when the dream of entrepreneurship truly becomes real and you realize, hey, it does say what it, what it advertised to me on that YouTube ad a long time ago. Anyhow, hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, leave a comment, like, subscribe, and tell me about your own freedom journey with entrepreneurship. How has it worked out for you so far? Hopefully it's been great and I'll see you in another video.